3.0 magnitude earthquake has been reported in Peru. It hit just before 3 a.m. local time in a village in north-central Peru. Right now, there are no reports of any deaths or any major damage. Happening now, it's a special day in Boston. Thousands are taking part. This is the 15th annual Run to Remember. The event is serving as a special tribute. Seven's Kim Lucy is live in Boston with more this morning. Good morning, Kim. Good morning, and yes, it's no coincidence this run comes Memorial Day weekend for those out here honoring our fallen first responders. And you can see the finishers of the half marathon right now with all of the supporters lining the route to greet them here back to the finish line. And this year, this run is taking on special meaning, honoring the lives of fallen Worcester firefighter Christopher Roy and Weymouth Police Sergeant Michael Chesna. Roy was killed in December while fighting a fire on Lowell Street in Worcester. He was a single dad left behind a young daughter. Sergeant Chesna died in the line of duty in July, shot and killed after responding to a report of an erratic driver in Weymouth. He was a husband and father to two young children. Sergeant Chesna's cruiser and a Worcester Fire Department vehicle, they led the way today, flashing their lights in tribute to the two fallen heroes as they made their way from the starting line. Behind them, 8,500 runners, all of them here to honor all who have died. Now, many of them say they run for a very special reason. And we've seen a lot of first responders out here running in full uniform. I spoke with one of them from L.A. Listen to what he had to say about being here today. Well, we have an excellent partnership with the Boston PD. A lot of our guys work with them on uh, a lot of things for children. And this race is for the memory of all our fallen. I love this city so much, I can't speak enough about it. I grew up in uh, western Massachusetts, and every time I come back, I feel like I'm home again. Yeah, because of these folks. His L.A. department, one of many represented here today. He says they have about 15 runners out here, but we also have folks from Chicago, New York, of course, many from across Massachusetts, and many of them, as you see, running with the American flag, making sure everybody knows what is really the meaning of this weekend here. All the proceeds from this event, they go to a lot of programs, some to help the mental health of first responders and others for community and youth programs supported by those first responders as well. Slay here live in the seaport. Kim Lucy, 7 News, today in New England. Also on 7, a man accused of vandalizing the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Dorchester is in custody. After police arrested him, the suspect was taken in for a mental health evaluation. People who visited the memorial this weekend say they are thankful for the arrest. Justin Doherty has the story. Governor Charlie Baker laying a wreath at the Dorchester Vietnam Veterans Memorial Saturday. Just moments before, state police arrested the man they say vandalized the memorial earlier this week. I must say I'm incredibly impressed with the job that the friends of this memorial have done, sort of clean up from the mess of a few days ago. The damage near the UMass Boston campus was heartbreaking for many. American flags tossed into the water, shrubs ripped from the ground, and swastikas drawn on the monument along Morrissey Boulevard. This memorial was also targeted six months ago. And given that this is the second time these folks have gone through this, I just felt I should come by and pay my respects. State police say the 33-year-old man is from Dorchester, and he was sent to the hospital for a mental health evaluation. Community members like Denise King felt it necessary to stop by the memorial. Because I really had to see, like, was it okay? She comes from a military family. Her nephew, James, served in the Army and died in 2007. She says she's relieved the man accused of desecrating the memorial has been caught. Had to be a crazy person. Though. This is nobody. Who would do that to veterans and stuff? People who gave their life for the country. Who would do that? In a statement, UMass Boston says with Memorial Day approaching, they hope the arrest will bring peace of mind for many. In the newsroom, Justin Dory, 7 News Today, New England. And we are following more news this morning. A Lawrence man is set to be arraigned Tuesday in connection with the death of Chloe Ricard. Police say that man brought the 13-year-old to a hospital in Lawrence last week. She later passed away. While Chloe's family is grateful police made an arrest, they're struggling with the heartbreaking loss. An arrest in the death of 13-year-old Chloe Ricard. Her family heartbroken, still shaken to the core. She had a little glow about her. You know, she really did. And that glow, I hope, is still going now. The Amsbury teen's lifeless body was dropped off at Lawrence General Hospital Monday afternoon. Now police say the man who brought her there, 47-year-old Carlos Rivera, is under arrest. It's a tough thing. 
You know, because this guy, what's his name? Carlos Rivera. He can eat tonight. He, he can, he's, he's got a roof over his head. I gotta bury my daughter. Chloe's stepfather says he thought she was staying at a friend's house in Amsbury Sunday night. Instead, investigators now say they believe the two girls were at the suspect's apartment in Lawrence, and her friend was there when Chloe's body was dropped off at the hospital. The suspect is charged with giving drugs to a minor and indecent assault and battery. Chloe's family says they plan to be there when he faces a judge. I'm gonna yell. I'm gonna say something. I am gonna say something because I hope he gets his. Because, you know, something, if that was his daughter, he'd be doing the same thing. I don't think he'd be feeding his daughter drugs. And this will just be the start of a difficult day. Chloe's wake is scheduled for that evening. I got strangers walking up to me, shaking my head. <laughs> you know, it's so hard. Now, while they say they're thankful to investigators for making an arrest, Chloe's family is focused on honoring the life of a young teen they say was just starting to live her life. Chloe was a great kid. She was 13 years old. 13. That, that just, like, sticks in my head. Like, the, the kid didn't even, she didn't even go to a, a prom. She's not going to graduate high school. There's so many things this kid's not going to do. Rivera is behind bars this morning and will face a judge on Tuesday. He is charged with giving drugs to a child and indecent assault and battery. Chloe's family hopes more charges will follow. On 7 News now, a child is expected to be okay after colliding with a car in Lowell. Witnesses say the child was on a bicycle and rode into the street, and that's when they hit the car. Now, that child was taken to the hospital, but again, is expected to be okay. Police are trying to figure out what caused a man's death after his body was discovered in Worcester. Uh, officers say the man's body was found on a Little League baseball field. The man has not been identified. Police are investigating a dangerous drive in Somerville. First responders say a car plowed through a fence and into a picnic table at a park Saturday afternoon. The driver was taken to the hospital. No one else was hurt and the fence was quickly fixed. And police in Chatham are looking into what caused this truck to flip over. Over. This happened on Route 28 Saturday afternoon. The road was closed while crews, crews cleaned up the fuel from the crash. It is back open this morning. Also this morning, an accused thief is in custody after police say he targeted banks here in New England. Officers say the Florida man stole hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now he is facing charges. Kiki Benzel has the story. A Miami man behind bars accused of stealing money from ATMs in Massachusetts <coughs> and Rhode Island. Seekonk police say he recently got the machines to spit out nearly $750,000. Officers arrested Dean Collin this week at a Santander ATM. Police say the bank staff called for help as they watched the suspect live on a security camera. Staff told police the suspect was trying to put several cards into the machine and that he matched the description of a man who was stealing money out of several ATMs in recent days. The bank's head of security told police the suspect had taken nearly $70,000 out of the same ATM Wednesday night and more than $15,000 last week. According to the police report, police in Warwick issued an alert for the suspect after nearly $50,000 was stolen from an ATM there. Santander security boss told police Colin somehow got his hands on credit card numbers and transferred the digital information onto the magnetic strips of other bank and gift cards and used those cards to withdraw the cash. Seekonk police say other law enforcement agencies are working this case and additional charges might be filed. In the newsroom, Kiki Vensel, 7 News, Today in New England. 940 and coming up here on 7 News Today in New England, he is one of Hollywood's biggest stars. But what is Will Smith like when the cameras are turned off? One of his co-stars in the new Aladdin film is giving us an inside look. And does the new Giants player look familiar? Well, if you don't recognize his face, you'll likely know his name. Good bag. Where can you find millions of dollars of total savings on 